There are always some days that I feel like we live in the middle of the Sahara Desert. For it's Arwa really Aitchaib and her mom Wafa, it's summertime and the living is not so easy. What is it like in the height of summer on a really hot day around here? I just can't stand it. It's like I feel sticky, it's humid out, and if you go out, the sun immediately burns your skin. They live in Chelsea, Massachusetts, in the shadow of Boston, but a real shade is hard to find. We had no tree over here at all. Chelsea is a classic urban heat island, covered in pavement and packed with parked cars that soak up and radiate heat. Climate Central research shows peak temperatures in these areas can be 15 to 20 degrees hotter than those with more trees and water. We're basically an island of, of hot stuff. Bianca Bowman works with Green Roots, a local group trying to cool down some of the city's hottest spots. They've turned this one single block into an urban laboratory called the Cool Block. So we looked at those spots and said, okay, where can we throw as many solutions as possible to cool those areas down? One, two, three. They've planted more than 100 trees, resurfaced streets in lighter colors to reflect heat. This looks great, but this isn't just about looks. And rooftops are getting a bright white makeover. So when you paint a rooftop white, it's actually reflecting heat instead of absorbing heat. Fixes like these could save lives as climate change fuels longer and more intense heat waves. Climate Central analyzed 217 U.S. cities and found that 88% are experiencing more extremely hot summer days compared to 55 years ago. Would you mind putting this on? Yeah. This summer, Boston University researchers are giving some Chelsea residents devices to track heat exposure. See that sensor in the tree right there? While sensors on the cool block monitor air temperature changes as trees grow and provide more shade. Research shows that parks, trees, and green spaces can reduce peak urban temperatures by up to nine degrees. Of course, finding space in big crowded cities is not always easy. So the folks that design them have to make the most of what they've got. It's one acre of land. It's a former traffic island. Nothing but gravel was here. Chris Reed is a landscape architect. He's worked on innovative urban forestry projects for Boston and Cambridge. How many trees did you plant on this little strip of land? 400 trees, one acre. If I just look directly at you, it looks like we're in the middle of the woods somewhere. Exactly right. And then I look over here and we're on what feels like a highway. No, it's exactly right. So you don't need acres and acres and acres of land. These kinds of places are in cities everywhere and can be transformed one by one. In Chelsea, a park will soon replace pavement right behind the Eichibe family's home. Does it feel like your neighborhood is getting better? For sure. I can agree on that one. We can feel the difference. When you go out, you can feel the breeze. You can feel like that it's getting better. For Climate Central, I'm Ben Tracy in Chelsea, Massachusetts.